Hi everybody, I'm Donna Terrell and welcome to Terrell Talk. This is an opportunity to get an opportunity for me to talk with people I think are interesting and I hope you'll find them interesting too. We're starting off our very first Terrell Talk with Mr. Mike Poor, you probably recognize that name. He's superintendent of the Little Rock School District and sitting right here next to me. Thank you so much for being here. Donna, it's fun. I'm, I'm excited to, to take on this opportunity, as you call as, it. As the very first person <laughs> to be on Terrell Talk. You know what? One of the things, though, I have to point out is you are everywhere everywhere now I, i'm not going to say i'm everywhere but it seems every time i go to a major event or i have somewhere i have to speak mm -hmm. sometimes i don't even see you in the audience and then i'll come back and i'll look on twitter or whatever and there's a picture that mike poor actually <laughs> tweeted of me and i how do you do this how do you get everywhere certainly your plate is so full well um you know, first off, I enjoy it. You know, yeah. I, I enjoy the opportunity to be out and I enjoy the interaction with people, yeah. especially enjoy the opportunity when I get to be at kids' events. I mean, that, that gives, kind of gives me juice and charges me up. So uh, some of the other things, you know, it, it's almost like working out, you know, where you go, oh, God, I've got this tonight. But then you <laughs> get there and then you have a wonderful time. So, um, but overall, you know, I, I felt it was really important to be visible mm -hmm. uh, in Little Rock, uh, to show that there was leadership that was here and here to stay. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, that's kind of almost been <laughs> a surprise to some people, like, he's not here just one year, two years, <laughs> he's going into his third year. Yeah. Um, and um, so uh, I, I hope all those things in terms of visibility um, show my commitment to trying to be a part of this community. Mm -hmm. You know, the first time I saw you at an event, I think it was for 100 Black Men they were having and uh, you had just arrived and there you were I recognized you not because I had met you but because Fox 16 had done stories with you and I'm like that's Michael Poor sitting there and sure enough you know I mean you you hit the ground running um, attending all of these various events all over the community so I just wanted to commend you on that before we actually get started with this because I, I think that's great we don't always see superintendent of schools everywhere but you are of course i was very strategic at that that event if i remember correctly i went up to you and, you did and because see i know that you know it's important to know donna terrell and uh, <laughs> look what it's what it's gained me i'm in front of you right now in yeah this, my very this first terrell talk yes <laughs> yes that's why i find you so interesting <laughs> no but really thank you for all that uh, all that you do let's talk about the little rock um blueprint design i'm going to let you explain it i could go into it but i'm going to let you explain what that is and we'll just kind of take it from there i think we're very intentional about the words of blueprint and design because it, i hope it portrays um an image and a reality at the same time that we are in the process of looking at our entire map the entire map of the little rock school district and trying to say how do we use our own facilities in the best way to, there's three things we're trying to do. One, make sure that we have improved learning environments for every one of our kids mm -hmm. to create more choices and opportunities for parents, whether it from birth, literally from birth, all the way up to when our students get ready for post-secondary. What do we do to try to help our own staff with salary? So those are the three targets. And you may say, well, how does that happen through a blueprint? Well, it happens through a blueprint because you know, the one thing that we have right now is uh, a way to organize our district, utilize our facilities so that we gain some of these things that, that are better for kids, hopefully better for our community, and, and even uh, better in terms of resources. But doesn't a lot of this center around the closing of McClellan and J.A. Fair um, and the new Southwest High School? I mean, it, uh, much of it centers around that. There's a lot of discussion about it still. Well, and that's the starting point. And, and what's interesting about that, if you look in history, is that, you know, this decision to build the Southwest High School, I, 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 I should get some props maybe for finally finding the way to, to fund to this thing it. and do it. But this was a decision made by a Board of Education so long before state takeover to say we want to build this high school they're the ones that bought this land mm -hmm. so the board had foresight ahead to say it's just not right to have students in facilities that are not as good as they should be mcclellan is the classic example and i it hurts me to say mcclellan's a not a good facility because we still have kids in there but it's it's not a good facility it needs to be demolished and rebuilt and that's a part of this design but there's also a reality that kids from McClellan, kids from J Fair, and also students from Hall. I don't want to leave them out. There's 300 students 
uh, that currently are on a bus 30 to 45 minutes mm -hmm. up to Hall each day, primarily English language learners that uh, we can have back in their home area uh, with this new high school. And so the new high school is extremely exciting. We've got a topping off ceremony coming up in October. Oh, wow. And we will celebrate, I guarantee that. This is happening quickly. It, it, it feels to me like it's happening quickly. I don't know about to you. Well, the, the delivery on the construction, you know, we broke ground basically a year ago at this time. And we're right on track, maybe a little bit ahead of schedule. We've got great business partners with us. Um, in helping us make this, that happen. Nabholtz, um, Polk Stanley is our yeah. architect. And so they're really creating, you know, a venue for success. We will open up that school in the fall of 2022, 20. August 2020. So 2020, that year, we'll have that open. And then that means that now all of a sudden you do have McClellan open. You do have Fair open. And it, 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 it kind of created the initial thing to say, what do we do to repurpose those facilities. And that's what I wanted to get to. So, I mean, some of this could have a dramatic effect on some middle schools as well as elementary schools, correct? It, it really does. And, and you know, I don't want to, you know, put anything that's a, a false, you know, vacate up there to say it doesn't. No, it does because yeah. the McClellan campus, as I've already shared, was such a poor campus that our plan would be to level that. Everything but the gymnasium. We have a good athletic field now there. Um, level that and then build a new K-8 concept. We've talked about that uh, ever since I've arrived to go the K-8 mm -hmm. route. That would bring in at least one middle school, Cloverdale, which is also a building that is not uh, sound for children. It's got all sorts of structural issues, mm -hmm. has forever, and has been called out for a long time, but we're finally trying to get to do something with it. Does Henderson fall in that category as well? Because, you know, I, I'm going to tell you, I have been in Henderson so many times. I'm, I'm a member of an organization, and we've adopted that school. And I've gone in there many times, and to me... What does it feel I, like I've, when you walk I've seen, in there? I've seen better-looking schools, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, there are wonderful people there. There are kids, obviously, some that face some challenges, which is why our organization has, has been working with the girls specifically. But it's, it's not a great place to go. Well, I, I feel bad saying that. No, I, I, I understand. And, and you know, the, the, the sad reality of it is it's not been a great place to go. For a long for time. For a long time. And so... If nothing else, I, I'm sure there'll be some detractors, um, folks that are going to say, you're doing the wrong thing. But these are things that should have been addressed a long time ago in reality. Mm -hmm. So Henderson, you know, this year I walked in in August to greet our new principal and the staff. And I'm walking in, I'm like, what's, something's different. And, you know, what's what different? we did is we just put new lights in, okay? <laughs> now, that's a minor deal, but a big deal because it, it, it made the environment better, but it's still not as good a facility as no. fair. I mean, and it's it, right. Yeah, I, exactly. I mean, some of the schools you walk into and it feels like a, it feels like it's the way a school should be. I mean, children should have a nice environment to go to. Well, you know, one of the, uh, the opposite ends of this is Pinnacle View, where we converted a warehouse. And, yeah. and so a warehouse that was four city blocks and, um, and now it's in a, a beautiful middle school. Mm -hmm. We want to create that same reality in the Southwest with a new McClellan. We want to have uh, our Henderson students go to Fair, which is really one of our better buildings, one of our newer buildings. Let's be honest, though. You have people that live in some of these neighborhoods. People identify with their schools. You know, neighborhoods identify with their yeah. schools. And you do have some people who feel like, no, this is a trick. No, you're really not going to do that. No, that's not true. How do you handle that? Well, and I think it's it's more than just, you know, thinking that we're we're trying to trick someone, but it's also that they have such belief in their own schools and in their neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And so you have to take that into account because the reality is that if you do something to a school, it, it impacts an entire neighborhood. It does. So you've got to be very conscious of that. So, you know, it's everything that we're talking about is basically in draft. Other than at McClellan, we know we want to go K. We know we want to bring Cloverdale in. Which elementaries becomes a part of that? That's where we're asking the community to participate. We know that right now we'd like to, and are my suggestion anyway, move Henderson to Fair, but there, are there two elementaries also could be there. If we don't do that option, what do we do with Fair? Yeah. Because it's a great facility. Are these facilities that are subpar, if you will, are, are they having an effect on students' learning, students', students ability to learn? Well, there's research out there you know, that, that shows that if you have an improved learning environment, um, and I, I looked at this research um, multiple times, and it, it can say anywhere from 2% to a high of 11%. I think 11%, I, I would never say that's true, but mm -hmm. I do think, you know, 
lighting, heat and air, all those things, windows make a big difference in terms of a learning environment. Is it the end all be all? No. And, and you know, one of the key things, and maybe we'll talk about this later, is you know, we can talk all the stuff about facilities, but bottom line, what Mike Poor has to do also do is I've got to get to a place where we improve reading scores. Well, we will be talking about reading scores, definitely, because okay. that's one of the things in, in one of our um, upcoming segments I, I want to talk to you about. But let's kind of wrap this one up. The feedback that you're getting so far, are you ready to talk about that at all? I mean, I know you're very early as of this recording in the stages of getting feedback from the community. We had our first community meeting last night, yes. and that was at McClellan. We had uh, probably a little over 100 people. Uh, there were some Is that good or bad? I felt it was good, um, you know, for a, a first meeting, um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that, that we have at least that type of participation all along. Okay. Uh, we also had people participating through Facebook Live, and, and so, you know, there were those that weren't there, they still were able to participate and see and hear. We've got materials being put up onto our website so that people can engage that way. We've got four other meetings. The next one is at J Fair and that's next week so so it's interesting you have the face-to-face -face meetings but you know and you said 100 people but nowadays social media really does help a lot because there are people who can still be engaged and then they may be inspired to attend this next meeting at JA Fair because you know something mm -hmm. was said or they want to make a comment on it or they do disagree with it you just never know but um, but that's good that you're trying to reach as many people as you possibly can uh, in at the end Will the community decide or will Mike Poor decide? Well, it, it, there's <laughs> a, 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 you know, probably the bottom line that would be uh, not truthful if I, I'll, I will be the person that will present a final plan to our community advisory board that will come in late October and also to the commissioner who acts as the board of education for Little Rock School District. So those two will receive the final plan. They will make their own either recommendations or approvals. Um, <coughs> the community gets to be involved right now. Mm -hmm. And so the process we have is very inclusive. Um, it really encourages people to share what they like about the idea, what they don't like, and are there other things they want us to consider. Okay. Certainly last night, as a part of the, the meeting, there were some things that made me think, there's some really good ideas coming forward. There was a gentleman oh, that, that came forward um, that talked about, you know, as we go open up this high school, there are people who are concerned about the two cultures meshing. And he felt like we ought to start that immediately in terms of, you know, people working together uh, with our kids to help their cultures kind of a, a, kind of a, a mesh yeah. together yeah. as quickly as we can. I think that's a, 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 it's something we've, we've already been working on, but his, his, his thoughts were a little bit deeper than that. And I like that. Um, there were others that, that threw out suggestions of, you know, what we might want to look at in terms of uh, some of the things, on, we haven't even talked about this, the eastern side of our district, mm -hmm. to try to advance additional pre-K slots. Because okay. uh, we have a group, Think Big Little Rock, uh, that's a part of our Chamber of Commerce, that are young uh, leaders in our community that have advocated to our entire community, to me as the superintendent, say, we need more pre-K. Okay. And I love that because that's one of the things we really do better than really probably any other district. We have the data to show that you're in our pre-K, doesn't matter which socioeconomic group you're in, when you go into first grade, you're gonna be better prepared than if you weren't a part of our pre-K. Okay, all right. We're sitting here talking with Superintendent Michael Poor. Um, we will be coming back next week with more of Mr. Poor here. You're listening to Terrell Talk. I should say watching <laughs> Terrell Talk.